Welcome to Middle Earth Friday, episode 35, October 6, 2017. Integration with Azure Cosmos DB. Welcome to this uh, episode of Middle Earth Friday, where we're going to talk about um, integration with Azure Cosmos DB, one of the newer Azure services. And we do not have any community content today. So Azure Cosmos DB launched during a build um, this year in, in the spring, uh, a new service within Azure, um, global distributed um, around every region in the world, elastic scale, like uh, many of the uh, Azure serverless services, um, low latency, uh, tunable consistency, comprehensive SLA. So one of the newest services fits into the serverless paradigm and it supports multi-models. And by multi-models, I mean it supports key value, column family, documents, and also graph. Where as a graph, you can see something like your data is your model, your model is your data. So it consists really of vertices and edges, where there's really a real strong relationship between entities. Entities being the vertices and the edges being the relations. So it's really explicit. So that's what it's meant uh, to be. So if you want to really go into relations like friends of friends of friends, then it's pretty hard to do this in documents or even with a relational model. But with a graph, it really works. A graph is also something that's behind LinkedIn or Facebook, for instance. That's why this technology is used. So it supports you know, the key value for Azure tables. Um, the document DB, which is a service that you're familiar with because this was already present in Azure, but this has been, has been migrated to this Azure Cosmos DB. It supports MongoDB and Graph um, through an open source uh, language towards it. Um, so for Neo4j, for instance, that's another Graph um, database or engine. Uh, they have a Sparkle, they have a different type of language, but here Gremlin is being supported once the open source uh, language for this. So in general, you know, if you if you look at Graph, um, you got Neo4j, which I already mentioned. You also have Cassandra, and those type of, of capabilities are available in the cloud, also in Azure, but then as an infrastructure as a service, not in in this predominantly case within Azure as a platform as a service. So it's multiple models, and they're perhaps they're going to be, or that's probably the future. There's going to be more models within this service. If you look at some of the characteristics of, of the DocumentDB service, so like it says, it's, it's global distributed, so you can find it in every region. So it's kind of a ring zero service. That is how it's uh, how it's labeled and how that's, that's really characteristic about this service. It elastically scales out, so you can go from, from gigabytes to petabytes uh, as in storage. And if you look at request units, so that's kind of the unit of measure when you upload and download documents or request units for the API or delete some, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, the request units, you can scale up to 100 million request units a second. It's got guaranteed low latency, um, meaning to the 99th percentile, depending of course in, uh, on your consistency model. So if you really go for low consistency, but high availability and low latency, then those models are that kind of models available and then you really have low latency or you can have a little bit more of consistency but then will there will be at the expense of your latency and availability a bit because you need to synchronize your your data about multiple regions but then again it spans globally so if you have an app that needs to be available globally then this cosmos db can really be of value to you it's got some good uh, promising uh, SLAs uh, availability, for instance, about 99.99%. .99%. So similar to some of uh, the other recent capability that came uh, available, or like the event grid, that have similar type of, of uh, SLAs with them. So let's look at this request units and data storage. So they got a capacity plan for this, and this is kind of 
interesting because if you build this type of capability within your integration solution and you want to make use of, of that Cosmos DB or you have to work with it, then it's really interesting to know or good to what are the costs of using this capability. And it's expressed in request tunes per second, but how can you measure or calculate it? Well, that's where this capacity planner comes in. So let me give you a demo of that request or of this capacity planner. So you can estimate the request units and the amount of data storage. So what you first need to do is upload a sample JSON file. So I have one of 125 KB. And let's say I want to quick um, put in 10,000 of those documents a day, and about 10 per second. I want to read five of them per second, so that's kind of view that API. I have about you know five documents per second. That's kind of what I want. And if I do update or delete, then again I have to upload the JSON files. So I have to do it separately. But if I do a calculation, then I get about like if I, if I want to have this service you know 24/7 for a month, then I need about 4,000 requests units a second, and a certain amount of data storage. So now I can go to pricing. So based on that app, uh, capability or capacity I want, I can go to the pricing calculator. And here I can say, okay, let's say about two gigabytes of, of storage per month. It's about 42 euro cents. So you know, it's probably less than a dollar. And then here you see 40 times 100. So that's 4,000 request units a second. And let's say I want to use this. You know, I need this 24 seven in a month then the cost will be about 200 euros, a little bit, 220 to 30 um, US dollars. So this is kind of gives you a good sense of what that capacity surmounts to and what kind of amount. And that capacity pl a planner really helps you to price, to see the price of, of your service. And a unit of measure is this request unit per second, which you get those numbers uh, using this um, this capacity planner. So this is about that capacity planner. So it's really really useful um, when building up your your service because you're going to look at your some of your integration components. If it's a function, then it's uh, through a consumption plan. Because you can also estimate that a little bit through a pricing calculator. And if you got logic apps or other components then you can really set up a good price in the end, looking at each of those services. But then again, for um, Cosmos DB, you really need to know what type of documents you're gonna upload. So I just use one 125 KB, but depending on average, what you're gonna upload, you really can estimate what your capacity would be. And the other thing is that, you know, with, with Cosmos DB, you can also add a function to it. So that's kind of within your um, Cosmos DB instance. So if you have a collection, you can select that collection and you can say, okay, create an Azure function on it based on a certain trigger, which is the Cosmos DB trigger and you can even choose your language. So if you just through that small type of wizard, say, okay, save, then it will kind of create for you this logic message trigger based on the Cosmos DB trigger. So you can add a function app, okay, the function in Azure, function app in Azure, add a function, and then in the function say, okay, I want to use that Cosmos DB trigger. But you can also do it straight away from your Cosmos DB uh, instance. So let's have a demo. So I'll just walk through through this small demo and then touch upon certain things with you know, around integration with your Cosmos DB. So let's say I have a, an order message that goes to an API and that API kind of says, okay, thanks for, for that message. And it will push it out to a service topic, which then is being listened to by a logic app that uses the Cosmos DB connector to insert that um, document into a, a, a collection. And because that you know kind of triggers a change because something has been added or updated or deleted, triggers that function and that function then is able to do a certain amount of work. Okay. 
So I already have uh, a fun, uh, this API running and I'm going to upload this document. So I'm going to push this. And now that's being sent to that service bus topic. Then I can trigger it. At least I'm going to trigger my logic app. And then it's running. And let's drill into it. So we'll take that off a of a topic. You cannot actually see it, but it's being parsed here. So this is that nine nine seven message. And I need to initialize it. Facebook on the fact that you know behind the covers this is not really JSON um, it's text so I really have to have it as JSON output so that's why I parse it through a function and then I use the document DB connector to insert this message into my collection and let's have a look at the ID here nine seven six seven so let's let's move over so this is now in my document db collection let's go to my logic app or sorry my cosmos db instance and here is a collection the logistic messages with a certain throughput there and here you can see in the blade add azure function so if I go into my data explorer, I can look up the document. It ends with three sevens. Here it is. And here you go. This is that message. Now let's move over to the function. The function that I created through Cosmos DB by clicking on that add Azure function. So that I'm going into an already existing function app I created and here you have that logistic messages trigger Now this is just the standard code so but here you can put in any kind of compute you want to do on that uh, document if I go to monitor and have a look in the logs so this takes a little while here we go then again you can see that the first document is that one, that one's got one. But going back to this function, task, it can have a collection or a list of documents. It doesn't per se have to be one document. It can be multiple documents entering your function and you can iterate through it and do some kind of task upon those documents. Now it's just one that you saw entering into my function. And there's a good channel nine um, session about functions and Cosmos DB. It's definitely you can check out um, on channel nine. So this is kind of the demo. It kind of shows you that you can integrate with Cosmos DB through Logic App Connector, but you can also now with that Cosmos DB trigger have a function act upon your or your collection. So let's say you get multiple documents in, then you can have kind of a change feed mechanism using that function. So the function can be triggered every time changes happens within your collection. So let's say orders come in and based on certain orders, you want to act upon them. Um, let's say something happened to the order and um, which you saw in that message, then you can act upon that. Now there's more um, capable of, of functions and, and Cosmos DB. So you can also do something in a function and a graph API. And this is being explained by uh, Brady Gastro, who is a uh, employee of Microsoft and he's done that in his blog. So something else you can you can check out if you wanna look into uh, integration with Cosmos DB, but not necessarily look at a collection in document DB, but let's say you wanna do something, uh, uh, a graph and using the graph API. So if you have feedback, please let it keep it coming uh, either through the, um, the email here or through Twitter. So, so please let us know what you think about the show or 
if you got any suggestions or other things you like to see please do uh, contact uh, you know either well us in this case it can be me or Ken uh, we're going to do a show next week again so like uh, I like also like to point out that um, you know when you watch this uh, episode it will be about two three weeks that you know integrate us is going to start so there's still um, tickets available so you can you know it rich trade still open the early bird has passed but you can still for a reasonable per price um, attend this event three day event with a lot of people of Microsoft and MVPs uh, on stage uh, I'll be there uh, as well so uh, please do uh, if you can look us up at uh, integrate us okay um thanks for watching this uh episode of middle of friday uh, i'd like to thank uh, uh Bistle 360 again for being a great host for for the show so uh, thanks a lot and i'll leave you with some of the music credits Look at me!